Stacey, it's great to have you today. I know you love the secular story, as do many, but those short-term headwinds, what will investors have to endure here, or should they be getting in now because of that long-term story? Uh, and so, look, we're at that point of the cycle now where investors are getting very nervous. There's been this kind of peak cycle versus stronger for longer debate going on. I think from a fundamental standpoint, the stronger for longer has been right. It's already lasted longer, though. It's starting to show some cracks. But from a sentiment standpoint, I'd say people are very firmly in the peak cycle camp. And, and we've been seeing it, obviously, like multiples have just been collapsing um, uh, through the year. Now, something that may be a little like mildly encouraging, um, if you look at the degree of multiple compression that we've seen, multiples have come down by a third. You went from about 21 times in the beginning of the year to about 14 times. And if you look over the last, like, I don't know, eight or 10 cycles of the last 10 or 15 years, that's about the degree of multiple compression that you typically get as, as things are going into this period. So that that's good. At the same time, however, we have not seen any earnings revisions, and that's where I think investors are looking for now. They, they, they actually are very hesitant, broadly, to step in front of most of these companies without actually seeing estimates come down. Um, we're at that point of the cycle. Is um, it, yeah. Isn't it kind of wild that we haven't seen earnings revisions yet? I mean, AMAT last night talked about all of these issues in China. It was one of the later companies to report in the earnings season. We saw those warnings from Cisco as well. Why, why haven't they come down yet? Why are so now, well, the now they yet? are starting to come down, but it's not demand related. It, it is supply chain, right? So for, just to look at AMAT and the semicaps, for example, this is actually the third quarter in a row that, that AMAT and, and most of their peers have been having issues. They've been having problems with the supply chain. Perversely, the semiconductor capital equipment players have not been able to get semiconductors in the wake of all the shortages um, in order to be able to, to build the tools and to ship the tools. And so it's been causing problems for a few quarters. Unfortunately for applied materials, it looks like things, those kind of issues were starting to get better for them, but then the lockdowns happened in April. And so this is oh. something new. Um, not a lot to do about it. What, what could you do, right? And we're, we're, we're hearing different things from different semiconductor companies, especially on the impact of China and, and the lockdowns. Um, it really depends on your China exposure. It depends on how much uh, critical exposure you have specifically to the Shanghai region. <laughs> Texas Instruments, for example, took a haircut. Um, some others have said it's not much of an issue. AMAT's getting hit, for sure. Yeah, that was. I thought that was fascinating, Stacey, where they said they reversed some supply chain challenges in February and March and then it went back in reverse in April. Uh, between them and Cisco this week, this notion, you know, we have this notion that uh, lockdowns being lifted uh, will create much better conditions. But Cisco's point is, well, everybody's going to rush to the bar. And that in itself, whether it's ports in Shanghai or eventually ports in L.A., are going to keep these things around longer than we think. You don't know. I mean, frankly, it, it's already lasted longer than I think people would have thought. And it's funny, every time something starts to get fixed, something else pops up. It's like whack-a-mole, right? And, and, and this is actually part of the issue. Most of the companies that are even, even seeing impacts, they're kind of suggesting they're guiding like it's going to get better. And eventually, I guess it has to, but I mean, we've had like, I don't know, two years now where new stuff has been popping up all the time. And so I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> like, as, <laughs> as we go, is there going to be something like more constraints? Will it be, you know, ports? Like, who, who knows? I, I don't know. But I, I'm amazed things have been, frankly, as resilient as they have been just in the wake of these kinds of disruptions. I and mean, it's not surprising right. that things are, are cracking in some sense.